Hello, this is YTPD. I am playing Minecraft. Before I do anything, uh, Enrique GG and Modern Turk, this is for you. Yes. Oh, let me just turn that on for a second. Yes, we are playing 1.7. Yay, new content. Well, sorry for the delay, everybody. Me, as you probably know, or maybe don't know, me and Silent Boom were both on vacation and stuff, so we were gone for a while. We're still going to be releasing some 1.6 content because uh, many of our series, uh, Secret, um, Soul Cave, The Regular Cave, Puzzle Hell, Knowing, we still have videos from them on 1.6, we're still going to be releasing them. But until uh, Silent Boom gets back, it'll just be me doing some 1.7 videos. And uh, we know how everybody's done 1.7 new content videos. You know, they talk about pistons, they talk about shears, and new way to redstone works. You know, everybody does those, so we're thinking, okay, we might as well do something too. But we wanted to make it a little bit more cool. So what I did was I made a map showcasing different ways that you can use pistons in adventures and adventure and puzzle maps. These, not all the, oh, here's just the intro screen. Not all these deals I say are mine. I scoured the redstone forums for quite a while. So uh, just in case you didn't know, the Minecraft forums now have a redstone thread or redstone sub forum. That's pretty cool. I scoured those forums for quite a while looking for cool things, and there are a ton of cool things besides elevators and uh, carts and uh, screens and stuff and printers. Those are all really cool, but of course they're not really practical, and they're especially not practical for adventure maps. So I decided to make a quick map, and this is a quick video talking about how you can use pistons in adventure maps. Okay, so basically this is just a re quick recap on how pistons work. Normal pistons can push other blocks. Easy. Sticky pistons can pull blocks, we all know that. And sand and gravel are still affected by gravity, but unlike in the piston mod, and to many uh, to many people's dismay, you cannot launch you can no longer launch them in the air, no can you longer launch your person in the air. Doki. They fall and stuff. Nice. Okay, so here's the first idea. This is probably pretty popular even though I haven't seen many videos on it. If you go on YouTube, most of the videos you see about pistons are either regenerating cobblestone walls or light switches or Jens or Jens door. I think that's the way you pronounce his name. So I thought this was pretty cool when I first heard about pistons. I don't see why so many people are aren't talking about this. You can use pistons as floodgates. Yippee Oh by the way this whole map will be f available for download. I'll post the link to the uh, forum post. And uh, whenever you see cobblestone, I tried my best to mark all places where there was redstone with cobblestone so that you can destroy it and figure out how it works. Because in this video, I will not be showing you how the individual uh, I items work. If you want to know how, them, how they work, just put in a request. I'm thinking of making some videos on how these individual components work, if anybody really wants to know. Okay. Now let's take that floodgate. Let's put it up in the air. Woohoo, little waterfall. And maybe you can have your guy climb up here. Find a secret location. Yippee. Kidoki. Oh, and uh, this is just a little train ride thing, just in case you need to make it to the uh, second half of the map, because there are parts where you can die, even though I tried my best to make it easy. Because it's not supposed to be a puzzle map. E okay, so sand control. We all know, well, most people know that you can use uh, redstone to control the flow of water, even before pistons. And uh, one of the popular uses for that were destroying these torches which hold up the sand so you can have like huge roof, huge roofs of sand falling down, or staircases. Well now instead of using water to control it, now you can just put a piston under there and have that piston slide out of the way like so. Yippee! Secret location. Idea 2B. Okay, idea 3. Well, everybody likes making doors, so I thought, why don't we put some doors in succession and make them all uh, James Bond style. Oh, that was a 3, by the way, sorry. Ooh, pretty. You can also make them close in reverse if you use a signal reverser. I didn't put in one. And also, this whole structure that contains all the redstone, I realized right after I finished building it that you can shave off two widths of block on each side. But of course, laziness struck in, so I didn't fix that. But if you want, you can dismantle it and rebuild it the more efficient way. 
You can also use an XOR gate if you want to use a make a put a lever here that closes the door from this side. Again, I didn't because this is not a tutorial. This is just a quick demonstration. So if you want to tinker with that, go ahead. This is something that I've been wanting to build for a while, ever since I heard about pistons. It's an airlock, so basically you pull the switch, one side closes, the other side opens. And same thing. Oops, sorry about that. Same thing. One side closes, one side opens. One side closes, one side opens. If you imagine like a spaceship, they use airlocks to make let the uh, I don't know the guys in the spacesuits go outside without uh, de depressurizing the entire uh, spaceship. But uh, if you can apply that to Minecraft, it's just gonna make a day. Imagine there could be a huge vat of water here that you want the person to swim around, maybe look for levers or treasure chests or something, but you don't want water leaking into your main part of the building. Just use an airlock. You can also use them for checkpoint systems, I guess, if you're clever. Mm, Trollolol doors. Trollolol doors? What could you ever possibly mean? Ah! Yep. Step on the pressure plates, the doors close in your face. And, uh, with single player commands, a pretty cool mod. I am, I have like god mode on, basically I have damage off, so I'm not going to get any damage if I fall into lava or hit anything. But technically, if you step into these doors and try busting your way through, you will suffocate. But uh, because of the new update, you now just slide out of blocks where you suffocate, so suffocation is a bit harder. Here's a stay, so you can make it to the back end. And again, you can use an and or an XOR gate to turn off these troll doors so people can go through. And uh, this isn't the main path, so let's head back. Do 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 Okay. Stairs. Retractable stairs. Those are always cool. And they look cool too. If you play with the timing of repeaters, just a quick preview here. You can make some pretty cool things. Because I know it's all clean and stuff to make them all come out at once, but I like making them come out in the This is downstairs. If you noticed, not only did the stairs pop out, the blocks came out of the wall. Or came into the wall, actually. So now you can head downstairs. Nice. Okay, uh, idea number six, suffocators. They will kill you. So back on the idea of suffocation, it turns out that with the pistons, you cannot crush people by pushing them into walls horizontally. Like, if I were to put a set of pistons here and collapse this wall into the person, it won't crush them, it'll just push them out, and it won't even cause them to suffocate. But you can continue to suffocate people by using vertical crushers. So uh, you pull this lever, these sponges go down. If you were to be under these sponges, like maybe there's a pressure plate under here that toggles the system, you would get trapped and you would suffocate. But you would have to make the hallway long enough because uh, as I'll show you by standing here and pushing the lever. Oh, I guess you don't slide out. Huh. Well, bugger. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I am back. Sorry about that. I thought that if you go under blocks to suffocate you, you would automatically be pushed out until you're out of the suffocation thing. But I guess if you're far enough down, you don't get pushed out, which is bad for me because I'm demonstrating, but good for all you people that want to use this trap. Oh, and for the underground rooms, I made doors so that you can access the redstone because uh, above ground, it's pretty easy just to use a diamond pick and just hack it everywhere because the places redstone are hidden is pretty obvious. But when you're underground, you don't really know, so I put doors so you can see the redstone. Pretty neat. Ooh, now probably my favorite part. Bridges. So yep, we've all seen the rising bridge out of water. But again, you can just make it look cool. You can just do some extra touches by adding timed repeaters to make it look cool. At least I think that looks cool. And again, you can go inspect the redstone. Here's a variation, a time bridge. Uh, this is just so you can go in again. Push this button. Bridge comes up. Wait a couple seconds. I'll probably make this shorter. Yep, the bridge goes back down. Woohoo! Ah! Whoa, I'm not sure why that happened. Huh. Okay, I guess I'll have to fix that. Okay, and now... Uh... One of our uh, subscribers and one of the people we subscribe to, uh, Waffle Gaming Central, uh, he told us that another one of our subscribers and other people that we subscribe to, the Gaming Tomato, he just absolutely loves jumping puzzles. So I decided to create this room 
this uh, little idea just for him. Um, I'm on fire right now, just uh, give it a second. Yeah, these blocks randomly go on fire for reasons I don't understand. I didn't think stone could go on fire. Okay, there we go. We pull this lever. Oh ho ho. Basically, just attach a set of repeaters to pistons and have them alternate. As, uh, as you can see here. There you go. Time jumping puzzle. I used, uh, if you look in underground, you'll see I used a combination of repeaters and, uh, torches to, to connect the, uh, pistons. That, instead of connecting directly with wire because, uh, you need to make sure all the ticks match so that they come in and out at a perfect rhythm because, uh, if they don't, you'll screw over the the player that has good rhythm and that'll be able to just time it perfectly. Unless you want to screw them over if you're mean like that. I'm gonna go try. And by the way, there's a hallway of shame for people that can't make it. It's like I said, this is just a tutorial creation map that I don't want to insult people. So let's do this. Yep. 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 Woo! Woohoo! I made it! Yay! Oh, other side of Hollywood. Why is there rain? I will turn off the rain. Okie dokie. And, uh, there's this weird, I don't know if it's a bug or it's a, quote, feature, uh, close quote, but if you, s the blocks that are moved by pistons become transparent, which means that you, not even transparent, it's just that they act like they're ghosts. You can't move on them. So, if you were to un be an unlucky fellow to step on a piston while it was going up, it wouldn't catch you and push you up. You'd fall into the piston and then you'd get pushed over into the lava. It's not good. Oh, and here's the lever. It turns it off. And as these signs tell you, I just want to give a big reminder to all the people that make puzzle maps or adventure maps. It's your responsibility to make sure that there is a way to shut off these clocks that power these devices. Because if you leave these clocks on, not only is the sound quite annoying to people that are like five puzzles on later, but for, especially for people that are playing with, other, with friends on SMP, these clocks provide big lag. And people don't like lag. So please, always provide a way to shut off clocks. Please. Especially for dispenser ones. Dispensers, dispenser traps where you can't shut off the clock after activating are just terrible. Yeah, let's go back upstairs.